Clinch River Breeder Reactor Project began in June 1970 when the United States Congress authorized the Atomic Energy Commission to undertake the design, construction, and operation of the nation's first liquid metal fast breeder reactor demonstration plant. The project was established with the principal objectives of, first, demonstrating that the liquid metal fast breeder can operate reliably and safely, and, second, demonstrating the economics of the fast breeder reactor cycle. This is the Clinch River, Oak Ridge, Tennessee, future site of the Clinch River Fast Breeder Reactor. This 1,364-acre site is owned by the United States government and is managed by the Tennessee Valley Authority. The Clinch River Reactor is a sodium-cooled fast breeder nuclear power plant designed for a net electrical output of 350 megawatts. The major systems of the plant are the reactor, heat transport, steam generator, and feed water system, turbine generator, fuel handling system, and various auxiliary systems required to support plant operation and maintenance. In a joint effort by government, utilities, and industry, the design, development, and fabrication of the plant and its components are well underway. Project participants from industry include the Atomics International Division of the Rockwell International Energy Systems Group, Westinghouse, General Electric, Burns and Rowe, and Stone and Webster. One of Atomics International's responsibilities is the design and procurement of the reactor fuel handling system and associated components. The reactor system requires periodic refueling, nominally once a year, to replenish the supply of fuel. The fuel handling system provides the facilities and equipment necessary to accomplish the yearly refueling operations and all associated functions, such as fuel handling within the reactor vessel, fuel handling and storage outside the vessel, and shipping and receiving operations on site. Fuel handling operations take place in two buildings the containment building, which houses the reactor, and the service building, which contains fuel handling facilities and ancillary equipment. Equipment and facilities located in the reactor containment building are limited to those involved with fuel handling inside the reactor during shutdown. They include the in-vessel transfer machine, referred to as IVTN, for moving fuel within the reactor vessel and the Auxiliary Handling Machine, or AHM, for installing and removing the IVTM. The IVTM is mounted on the smallest of the triple rotatable plugs, which form the closure head of the reactor. By rotating the three plugs, the IVTM can be located over any core position in the reactor. The IVTM can then withdraw a spent assembly from the core or insert a new assembly by vertical motions and grappling action. Lateral movement of the core assembly within the reactor vessel is accomplished by translation of the rotatable plug. The majority of the fuel handling equipment and facilities is in the reactor service building, which is adjacent to the reactor containment building. Fuel handling facilities and equipment located in the service building include a sodium-filled storage tank for temporary storage of spent fuel, a fuel handling cell for inspection and handling of spent fuel assemblies, and facilities for receiving new fuel and for shipping spent fuel. The X-Vessel Storage Tank, or EVST, is a 20-foot diameter by 45-foot deep sodium vessel. It contains a two-tier rotatable turntable capable of holding 650 fuel assemblies. The assemblies are stored in sodium-filled pots with two pots stacked one above the other in each storage tube. 
Access to the storage positions is obtained through nine openings in the closure head. The turntable is rotated to gain access to each storage position in each row. The storage tank also contains a number of dry argon gas filled preheat tubes located in the upper tier where cold assemblies are placed for preheating prior to immersion in the hot sodium. The fuel handling cell is a small hot cell with three stations a maintenance station, a fuel examination station, and a spent fuel loading station. Selected fuel assemblies can be visually inspected and dimensionally measured in this facility. In addition, spent fuel assemblies are prepared for shipment off-site. Prior to loading operations, a shipping cask is positioned and sealed below an opening in the floor of the cell. The fuel assembly can now be transferred to the cask through the floor opening. In addition to the equipment and facilities located in the containment and service buildings, fuel movement between buildings and facilities is accomplished using the X-Vessel Transfer Machine, or EVTM, a heavily shielded and cooled transfer machine mounted on a gantry. The EVTM has a central 8-inch diameter cavity for carrying a fuel assembly. This cavity contains an argon atmosphere. Due to their negligible heat production, new fuel assemblies are handled bare, but spent fuel must be carried in sodium-filled pots to adequately cool the fuel assembly. The sequence for handling fuel begins with the arrival of new fuel on site in lightly shielded containers. Once the containers and their contents have been checked, a shipping container is placed in one of the two new fuel unloading stations by the service building crane. Here, the shipping container atmosphere is changed from air to argon. After the container has been inerted, the EVTM picks up the assembly and transfers it to a special preheat station in the EVST, where it is preheated in argon to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. After preheat is complete, the assembly is transferred by the EVTM from the preheat station to a sodium-filled pot in one of the storage positions in the EVST. The fuel remains in this position until the reactor is shut down and made ready for replacement of fuel assembly. After reactor shutdown, refueling preparations begin by removal of the large diameter equipment hatch to allow movement between the containment and service buildings. Also, the IVTM is then installed in the reactor head by means of the AHM and the building crane. Floor valves are positioned over access openings to the reactor and the X-vessel storage tank. The reactor is now ready to be refueled. The IVTM, in conjunction with the rotatable plug, removes the spent fuel assembly from the core and deposits it in an empty pot located in a transfer position outside the core but still within the reactor vessel. At the same time, the EVTM removes the new fuel assembly from the EVST and transports the assembly to the reactor. By sealing the EVTM to a special port in the head of the reactor, the EVTM can lower the new fuel assembly into a second transfer position in the reactor within reach of the IVTM. During the same attachment operation to the reactor head, the EVTM removes the spent fuel assembly in the first transfer position. While the EVTM transports the spent fuel to the storage vessel, the IVTM completes the cycle by installing the new fuel assembly into the open core lattice. These operations are repeated until the reactor core has been refueled. When refueling is completed, the reactor is brought back online. After the spent fuel in the storage tank has decayed for approximately 100 days, the assemblies are ready to be shipped off site. A fuel assembly is transferred by the EVTM in a sodium-filled pot 
from the storage tank to the fuel handling cell. The fuel assembly is removed from the pot by means of a gas-cooled grapple for loading into the shipping cap. Capabilities exist in the cell to visually and dimensionally inspect the assembly. A spent fuel shipping cask is brought into the service building by a special railroad car, moved to a position beneath the fuel handling cell, and sealed to the loading port. Fuel can now be transferred from the cell to the shipping cask. When the cask is full, it is disconnected from the fuel handling cell, inspected for conformance to shipping regulations, and then transported by a rail to a fuel reprocessor. Quench River's fuel handling system is well on its way to becoming a reality. The necessary development testing has been complete, as has most of the engineering design. Many of the major fuel handling components are being fabricated, and some are presently being proof tested. The IVTM was designed and fabricated by Atomics International at Canoga Park, California. Component tests were conducted between 1974 and 1977 to support the IVTM design phase. These tests included environmental testing of the grapple drive rod seals, performance testing of the drive motor, braking system, and gear train, and kinematic testing of the grapple under adverse conditions. Manufacturing began in August of 1977 with machining and assembly of the 43-foot-long in-vessel sub-assembly and the grass. A drive tower structure was fabricated to house the grapple actuator mechanism. Assembly of pneumatic and electrical components on the equipment bay structure completed the last major sub-assembly. In May of 1979, the major sub-assemblies were delivered to the Energy Technology and Engineering Center located at Rockwell International Santa Susana Field Laboratory. Here, the IBTM was assembled into a 65-foot-high machine to undergo a testing program which would be equivalent to five complete core refueling. The testing program was divided into two stages. The first stage, completed in July of 1979, was a dry checkout to verify the IBTM's capability to withdraw and insert the core assemblies through the full range of misalignments and loads expected during refueling operations. The second stage, performance testing the IBTM in a hot sodium environment, will begin in November of 1979. During this stage, the IBTM computer controls will be checked out concurrently with the testing of the machine. After the IBTM has completed its performance test, it will undergo any necessary refurbishment and then will be shipped to the Oak Ridge site. After extensive developmental testing of key features of the EVTM, final design was completed and procurement was initiated. In 1973 and 1974, Several small-scale tests investigated important heat transfer parameters. These tests supported preliminary design decisions. And in 1975, a full-scale test with a cooling system, cast body internals, and an electrically simulated fuel assembly confirmed the final design. Currently, all long-lead forgings and castings for the EVTM are on hand including the grapple drive housing and cover, upper support modules, viewport housing, drip pan housing, closure valve body, and other major modules. Once the remaining EVTM components have been manufactured and the grapple and grapple drive proof tests completed, these sub-assemblies are scheduled to be shipped to a test site in Oak Ridge for final performance testing of the full assembled machine. The EVST, which is used for the storage of fuel assemblies, is well into fabrication. 
The storage vessel and components were designed by Atomics International and subcontracted to a wide range of industrial concerns for fabrication. Four forgings were procured and delivered to Babcock and Wilcox, who will fabricate the major components. The storage vessel support plant required one of the largest forgings made by Lavish Company at their Wisconsin plant. Starting with a 336,000-pound heated steel ingot, the general shape was formed by ring forging machines and then quenched in a water pool, followed by tempering the steel in a heat treating furnace. The forging was then rough machined to its 24 foot diameter and delivered to Babcock and Wilcox's Mount Vernon, Indiana plant for final machining and assembly. At the Babcock and Wilcox plant, other EVST parts have been fabricated and assembled. Steel plates have been rolled and welded into shell cores. The vessel bottom head has been formed from smaller shaped pieces and final machined to a smooth dish head. The turntable grid plates for support of the 330 storage tubes have been drilled and machined and the vessel closure head is presently being final machined. Other EVST components are being fabricated by industry. Upon completion of these components, they will be assembled with the Babcock and Wilcox vessels for a final functional proof test before delivery of the completed vessel to the Clink River site. The fuel handling cell components are in various stages of design and development. The in-cell crane, powered manipulator, and the master slave manipulators have completed fabrication and have been tested at the Santa Susana Laboratory. The equipment performed satisfactorily under mock-up situations. In the future, these components will be assembled in a mock-up structure of the handling cell at Santa Susana. There they will be used to confirm the operation of the other cell equipment. Several mock-up components will be built and tested to provide design information before fabrication of plant hardware. After equipment has been checked out, the mock-up will be disassembled and shipped to the Oak Ridge site as an operator training device. The individual fuel handling equipment must be controlled as an integrated system. To do this, an overall refueling control system has been designed, which includes three intercommunicating mini-computers. These computers have been procured, and the software program has been designed to enable the computers to perform their individual and combined functions. Tests are currently underway to demonstrate their overall performance capabilities. Over 80% of the fuel handling equipment has been designed, most of the major components are in the process of fabrication. Components fully designed and ready for fabrication include the AHM, floor valves and adapters, the EVTM gantry, the fuel handling cell maintenance and examination equipment, and miscellaneous storage facilities. Progress has been substantial. Through extensive component testing to support the design phase, followed by confirmatory proof testing of plant hardware, fuel handling system components are verified to be safe and reliable before delivery to the plant. The Clinch River components are well on their way toward completing the project. 